There are many different aspects of defense, on the ball, off the ball, rim protection, help side, and many more. In this video, we dive into what the most important attributes are on the defensive end and what components make a defender great. Then I'll rank my top 10 defenders in all of NBA history and provide reasoning as to why they rank there and what prevents them from being higher or lower. As a lot of people know, every single day for almost a year I've been non-stop watching film and evaluating every single season of each player's career sampled for my top 100 greatest players of all time series. If you want to check out that series, you can find the link in the description. These player evaluations are called CORP, or Championship Odds Over Replacement Player, basically meant to capture how much on-court impact a player provides on any random team relative to their era. Corp uses a score for offensive impact and defensive impact, and includes health and portability to show how impactful a player is. This idea was adopted from Ben Taylor, the creator of Thinking Basketball, but I took it a step further to rank my top 10 defenders ever, using my defensive valuations for each season, exponentializing those values to weight peak more than longevity, and getting my list. Now of course these player vows are completely my opinion, but I did my best to leave all preconceived narratives and media driven agendas to the side when doing my study of each player, to accurately give a depiction on what makes a defender great. Well what exactly does make a defender great? The most important factor of defense has always been rim protection for one. If we look at a list of the top 20 defenses in NBA history, all 20 of them are rim protection teams. Make it 30, and all 30 are rim protection teams. Bottom line is that you won't have a top defense in NBA history without a great rim protector simply because taking away the paint, the easiest shot in basketball, is more valuable than any other type of defense. This doesn't mean that perimeter defenders can't be great, we've seen it many times, it's just providing context as to why guards and wings will never be able to impact the game defensively at the same level of rim protecting bigs. On ball defenders can only affect two people at most at the same time, the ball handler and the screener but off-ball defenders can affect all five players depending on their rotational abilities and defensive motor. Think of a player like Giannis or Draymond Green who consistently anchor elite defenses. This makes off-ball defense more valuable than on-ball defense as well, and the players who are strong off the ball with elite rim protection usually anchor the greatest defenses. Keep in mind that when ranking these defenders, while I value their defensive peak most, how long you were able to hold that defensive impact is very important as well, separating 5 year stints from 15 years of consistency. Let's start with the honorable mentions. Rashid Wallace, a strong defensive communicator and post defender who was mobile and had a great defensive longevity, but his peak holds him back from the top 10. Alonzo Mourning, one of the greatest rim protectors in league history who was extremely high motored and active, but health problems and injuries hurt his longevity, preventing him from the top 10. Dwight Howard, an extremely active rim protector and help side defender who possessed the ability to step out and guard stretch bigs, a short prime holds him back from the top 10. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a historic shot blocker who anchored some of the greatest playoff defenses in NBA history, had outstanding longevity but sometimes lacked the effort or motor on that end, hurting his top 10 case. Elvin Hayes, an extremely aggressive on and off ball defender who was solid in passing lanes and a great shot blocker, all time defensive longevity but his peak just keeps him outside of the top 10. Now let's get into the list, starting with 10 and that's Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace used his all-time physical tools to become one of the best rim protectors in NBA history. He used his strength to hold his own against elite post players and made it almost impossible to get good positioning on him down low. He was also very quick on his feet and used this to hedge in pick and roll situations and recover on those pick and rolls to stop lob threats. Because of his great timing, he was able to get lots of blocks, peaking in 2002 at 3.8 blocks per 75 possessions. On top of this, Wallace was extremely high motored and active, and was an elite defensive rebounder, putting together one of the best defensive peaks ever. Because of this, he was able to anchor some historic defenses. From 2001 to 2007, Wallace anchored a negative 4.2 defense, peaking with the 2004 Pistons, that were the 6th best defense in NBA history, and the 4th best playoff defense in NBA history. The 2007 Bulls were also anchored by Wallace, and the 14th best defense in NBA history. 
While Wallace clearly possessed the ability to anchor all-time defenses, his prime didn't last very long, preventing him from being higher than 10. 9. Patrick Ewing Patrick Ewing's defensive impact came from his amazing rim protection. He was a great shot blocker, peaking at 3.8 blocks per 75 possessions in 1990 and having a 10-year prime of 2.9. What took Ewing to that next level was that he was also mobile enough to step out to guards and stretch bigs and still recover to the paint to stop driving threats. This gave him some versatility, being able to stop threats all over the court and his high motor only elevated that. Later in the 90s as his knees started to break down, he was less active and less mobile but was still able to make plays at the rim and contest shots and used his big frame to guard the post heavy bigs of that era. This led to Ewing anchoring some amazing Knicks defenses. From 1989 to 1997, the Knicks had a negative 4 relative defensive rating, peaking in 1993 and 1994, posting the 4th and 5th best defenses in NBA history. Of course the Knicks were a heavy defensive team, but Ewing's impact is what turned them into a GOAT level defensive team. While I would say Wallace had a better defensive peak than Ewing, Ewing's great defensive longevity and consistency moved the needle, giving him the slight edge. Eight. Dikembe Mutombo Dikembe Mutombo was one of the best shot blockers to ever step foot on a basketball court, peaking at an absurd 4.8 blocks per 75 possessions in 1996 and trademarking the finger wag celebration. He was great in the post, using his size and length to not only send shots away, but alter them as well, and combined with his strong help defense, stopping all slashing threats at the rim, he produced an all-time defensive peak. Along with this defensive peak, he had amazing longevity as a defender as well, still averaging more than 3 blocks per 75 in his 14th season. Of course by then he had lost all of his mobility and he couldn't play big minutes, nonetheless he had a lengthy career as a defensive anchor for some great defenses. From 1992 to 2002, an 11 year span, Matumbo anchored a negative 1.5 relative defensive rating which is far from historic but a clear negative over such a large span. While Matumbo never anchored a GOAT tier defense, there's no denying just how much impact he had on that end and how long he held that impact, earning him the number 8 spot. 7. Nate Thurmond Nate Thurmond was the greatest post defender in NBA history, using his size and strength to match up with any center, and he was extremely active and high motored. For evidence of just how good of a post defender Thurman was, here's how all NBA centers from that time performed in games against him compared to their averages. You can see that every single All-NBA Center sampled drops in both volume and efficiency when facing Thurmond, just proving how good he was one-on-one. -on -one. So what prevents Thurmond from topping this list? Well, he wasn't very mobile, being a bit stationary, which hurt him as a team defender, and he was sometimes a block chaser. From 1965 to 1973, the Warriors had just a zero relative defensive rating or a league average defense, and although these teams were poor defensively, Thurman's team defensive errors definitely played a part. Despite this, Thurman was still able to produce one of the greatest defensive peaks ever relative to error off of his post defense alone, but with lackluster longevity and injury problems, he earned the 7 spot. 6. David Robinson David Robinson was known for his explosiveness as a defender, being able to contest any shot without a running start, leading to him being an elite shot blocker, peaking at 4.4 blocks per 75 possessions in 1992 and producing a 10 year prime of 3.5 blocks. The explosiveness also translated to his foot speed, being extremely mobile and a great help side defender on top of being quick enough to guard perimeter players. His best defensive ability was how well he altered shots. He had great timing and was outstanding at contesting shots on both the perimeter and inside the paint. In the post, Robinson was able to use his brute strength and lengthy build to slow down strong bigs, but if left on an island would sometimes get faked because of how much he wanted to leap at shots. This is extremely evident in the playoffs against Hakeem Olajuwon. All of this led to Robinson being able to anchor very elite defenses at times by himself. From 1990 to 2000, the Spurs had a negative 3.2 relative defensive rating and what makes this so much more impressive is the 1997 season where the Spurs had a plus 5.6 defense being dead last in the NBA, a season where Robinson played just 6 games. When excluding that season, the Spurs from 1990 to 2000 had a relative defensive rating of negative 4.1, peaking in 1999 at negative 7.2 which ranks 11th in NBA history. Robinson clearly showed the ability to anchor all-time defenses despite poor help, making him one of the best defensive floor raisers ever, but with just decent longevity, he just missed the top 5 and earned the 6th spot. 
5. Wilt Chamberlain In an era with no 3-point line, being a 7-1 athletic phenomenon was enough to make you a great defender, but Wilt was more than just a product of his athleticism. For example, Wilt was outstanding at using his hands on and off the ball, being able to match up with elite post bigs one-on-one, -on -one, or play weak side rim protection, and this led to him getting some absurd blocks. Although blocks weren't officially tracked back then, you can find hand records suggesting he routinely posted games of 10 or more blocks and averaged likely close to that, making him one of the greatest shot blockers ever. Because of Wilt's historic shot blocking, he was a very intimidating paint presence. When watching, you can see players completely change their offensive approach to avoid Wilt in the paint. The biggest flaw of Wilt was block chasing though. He was very quick to leave his feet and would consistently get called for goaltends and his lack of lateral quickness made it tough for him to switch onto perimeter players, although that wasn't as important in that era. Despite these errors, Wilt was still able to anchor some outstanding defenses. From 1964 to 1973, Wilt anchored teams with a negative 2.8 relative defensive rating, showing solid consistency as a defender. Wilt was able to produce one of the greatest rim protecting peaks ever, while having great longevity, earning him the 5 spot. 4. Tim Duncan People forget just how good a young Tim Duncan was. He came in the league in his athletic peak and was so mobile he was often playing the wing and guarding perimeter players as a primary matchup, and this mobility allowed him to be one of the best help defenders in NBA history. He used his length to alter shots in the paint and on the perimeter, and his ability to recover from the outside led to great rim protection. Into the 2000s, Duncan started playing more center and became the primary rim protector as David Robinson slowed down, and Duncan's shot blocking numbers rose as expected, eventually peaking at 3.4 blocks per 75 possessions in 2013, but having a full 19 year career of 2.6 blocks per 75, and this proves that Duncan's best defensive attribute was his consistency and longevity, being able to anchor defenses for a long time. The Spurs from 1998 to 2016 had a relative defensive rating of negative 5.1, stretching over Duncan's entire career and never once going below league average, even for a season. Obviously Popovich and the rest of the Spurs played a huge part in this, but there's no denying just how successful Duncan was as an anchor, anchoring the 2004 Spurs to the greatest defense in NBA history and playing a big part in two other top 8 defenses, giving the Spurs a top 2 defensive dynasty in league history. Duncan had an interesting defensive career. He started as the mobile forward, then became the active help side defender, then the stationary rim protector, and every single time the result stayed the same. An elite team defense and an elite defensive season from Duncan, giving him a historic defensive peak and arguably the greatest defensive longevity ever, earning him the number 4 spot. 3. Kevin Garnett Kevin Garnett came in the league and was instantly shocking the league with his defensive versatility, being a 6'11 small forward who was being assigned to guards, and actually locking them down. The most prominent example of this was the 1997 first round, where Garnett was guarding Clyde Drexler and held him to under 49 true shooting. The versatility doesn't stop there though. You can see the Timberwolves running a full court press, with Garnett being the chaser here. His quickness and length made it almost impossible to get any passes through him or shots over him, and giving him versatility on that end that had never been seen before. Young Garnett had very high steal turnout as a result, peaking at 1.7 steals per 75 in 1999, a historic rate among bigs. But this wasn't even his best ability as a defender, that would be his help side defense, again using his length and quickness to alter shots at the rim at a historic level, and although he wasn't an all time shot blocker, just 2.3 blocks per 75 at his peak, he was still protecting the rim at one of the highest levels ever. On top of this, Garnett had the highest revving motor in league history, never even taking a play off despite playing almost 40 minutes per game throughout the entirety of his prime. Garnett played on some of the worst teams ever in Minnesota. Yet he always kept them honest on defense. From 1999 to 2007, the Wolves had a negative 0.3 relative defensive rating, peaking at negative 3.2 in 2004, Garnett's MVP season. In Boston, Garnett finally received some defensive help, and the team defenses skyrocketed. From 2008 to 2013, the Celtics had a negative 5.7 relative defensive rating, peaking in 2008 at negative 8.6, giving them the third best defense in NBA history. 
When adding in 2007 and 2014, the years before and after Garnett, it becomes pretty clear just how much defensive impact even an aged Kevin Garnett had, and there's no doubt in my mind that if Minnesota surrounded him with better defenders, those would have been historic as well. Garnett put together one of the best defensive peaks ever, and was impactful on that end until the day he retired, giving him great longevity and earning him the number 3 spot. 2. Hakeem Olajuwon Hakeem Olajuwon was extremely mobile for a 7-footer, and paired that with his strength to make him one of the best rim protectors in league history. Olajuwon had great composure, and this allowed him to not only guard bigs, but step out and stop perimeter threats as well, giving him great defensive versatility and making him one of the best recovery defenders ever. Olajuwon's strong defensive instincts, combined with that athleticism, made him one of the best shot blockers ever, peaking at 4.4 blocks per 75 possessions in 1992 and having an 18-year career of 3.2 blocks per 75. Out of the entire three-point era, no defender could cover as much ground as Olajuwon, especially in his younger days, he had a 7-6 wingspan to pair with that mobility, being able to alter just about every last pass and shot that was attempted while he was on the court. Although Olajuwon peaked as a player in 1993 and 1994, his defense peaked from 1989 to 1991, being the pinnacle of his elite athleticism and his older IQ, and instead of looking to block shots as emphatically as possible, he became way smarter in the pick and roll, and this is when the Rockets team defense started to peak, despite Olajuwon having lackluster help. From 1987 to 1995, the Rockets had a negative 2.8 relative defensive rating, never quite reaching the all-time level, but on teams with little to no defensive help, Olajuwon consistently kept them above league average, and led them to a number one defense in 1990, showing just how good of a defensive floor raiser he was. Olajuwon was very consistent on them throughout almost the entirety of his career. As his mobility simmered down, he relied more on his mind and how smart he had become as a defender, and because of this, on top of his historic peak, he is often recognized as one of the greatest defensive players ever, and in my opinion, the second greatest defender to ever grace the hardwood. 1. Bill Russell I can't stress enough how big the gap is between Bill Russell and the rest of NBA history on the defensive end. Nine teams in NBA history have won a championship with a below average offense, five of those being Bill Russell's Celtics. This is because the Celtics were the greatest defensive dynasty in NBA history, winning games strictly based on getting stops and being the embodiment of defense wins championships. You might say well Bill played on stacked teams, look at the Hall of Famers, but the craziest part is that these teams played at just a 35 and 47 pace in games that Bill missed throughout his career and a 59 and 23 pace with him playing. And with minimal offensive impact, it's clear just how much value he was adding from his defense alone. If we look at the Celtics team defense from 1955 to 1970, there is an extremely clear trend going on, having an awful defense the two years before Russell got drafted and back below league average the moment he retired further showing just how much impact he brought on the defensive end. The Celtics throughout Bill's career had a negative 4.8 relative defensive rating, peaking at negative 8.7 in 1964, making them the second greatest defense ever. When adding in the context of how much different the points per possession were back then, this would be roughly equivalent to a negative 11 defense today, a mark that will never get reached again. On top of this, the Celtics also had historic playoff defenses throughout Bill's career, posting a negative 3.8 relative defensive rating and the negative 12.4 in 1964 would go down as the greatest playoff defense ever. So what made Bill so impactful defensively? Well for one, he was ridiculously athletic, so much in fact he was earning Olympic honors based on his leaping ability and he was also extremely quick on his feet, being able to switch onto guards like Jerry West and Oscar Robertson, then go out and shut down Wilt Chamberlain the very next game. However, what put him on another level was his defensive mind. There was no outsmarting Bill Russell, being able to read plays and actions like nobody else in the history of basketball, and being in perfect position for a contest almost 100% of the time. In the 60s era, spacing wasn't nearly as prominent, so for someone like Bill to be able to cover as much ground as he could almost made him able to guard all 5 players at once in a way, meaning you could put him on a team with 4 awful defenders and the team would somehow still have one of the best defenses in the league. Combining this mobility with his size, mind, and historic defensive rebounding, Russell posted a level of defensive peak that will never be reached again, and had 13 MVP level years on that end, giving him by far the greatest defensive career in basketball's history.
Now let's look at how the final career scores stack up against each other on my list, going back to the top 20 with Scottie Pippen, Sean Marion, Draymond Green, Artis Gilmore, and Bobby Jones just rounding out the top 20 all time. And here's how that same graph looks if we include the career of Bill Russell. An outlier among outliers of outliers. And that's it for the top 10 defenders in NBA history. Make sure to subscribe and turn my post notifications on to stay up to date on all of my new uploads. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at the Hoop Venue and Twitter at KG's Goat and subscribe to my second YouTube channel HB to keep up with my other content. You can find those links in the description. If you want to become a YouTube member and gain access to tons of cool new perks, that link will be in the description as well. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you agree and disagree with on this list. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.